Hey folks, uh, I wanted a video where I went through how to make a trend line on Excel and Google Sheets. Uh, I'm going to start with Google Sheets and then go to Excel. So depending on what you use, just kind of fast forward until you see me using Excel. Uh, I have two graphs here that I'm going to use. And for Google Slides, uh, sorry, Google Sheets, you want these three dots uh, and edit chart. And there's all sorts of options, but you want to go to the customize menu and then series. Uh, and you will have a chance to add a trend line. Now, checking the trend line box gives you lots of options. Um, you can try multiple different ones, but linear and power series are really, for the most part, the only ones you're going to need. Maybe polynomial, never exponential, uh, for physics anyway, at least the physics we're talking about, whatever. So linear. And then usually you want the equation. And so you would click on label and then use equation. And then it would put the equation in a heading at the top of the graph. Um, so that's a linear graph, and, and that's great. Uh, position versus time graph over here looks a little bit different. So again, edit chart, customize, series, add trend line. Uh, this one, linear fit doesn't look too good. I know you can't see it under here. Uh, so I'm going to change linear to power series. Uh, and then use equation. Now, the thing that you want to understand is in physics, all the relationships that we look for are going to be what, what I guess I refer to as the pretty powers. And so 0 0.209 is the exponent on time here. Uh, and so you would understand that you should round that to 2. That kind of part of the, the the way error shows up and uncertainty shows up in your labs is in the equation you develop. Um, so 2.09 is not going to be the exponent. It's going to be 2, uh, and you are just like a little bit off because of your uncertainty in your data. So that's Google Sheets, and then Google, um, and then Microsoft Excel is next. So again, you have your two graphs. I have my two graphs here. These are the same graphs. Um, Excel, you want to right click and add trend line. Um, and again, it'll put up some options. Again, you get to choose uh, linear, yes. Power, yes, maybe. Polynomial, sometimes, nothing else. Um, <clears throat> and then at the bottom, you can check the box that says display equation. Um, and I think you can do this on Google Sheets. You can also use the R squared value. The closer that is to one, uh, the more, the, the, the better your trend line describes your data, the more accurately it does. Uh, and so the equation is displayed here uh, with Excel. Like you can, you can modify the equation a little bit. You can change its font. I think you can do that in Sheets too, but I just don't remember how. So that's that. Um, and then again, I'm going to do it for graph two. Um, if there's already a menu over here, it defaults to um, whatever option you select. As you can see, the linear trend line doesn't fit very well. Um, and I don't remember why power isn't an option here. I, Yeah, I'll have to think about that. Um, anyway, uh, polynomial is the one we're going to use. Now, you would have to try, right, like different orders. But generally in physics, you want a polynomial of second order. Um, and then you can display the equation on the chart. And it gives you this. All right, so I encountered a problem in my video, and I can't really explain it. Um, now, you know, for this equation, uh, we can ignore the x and coefficient terms and again go to with like x squared. Now if you you're noticing maybe if you do a polynomial fit you get the whole number exponent whereas if you do a power fit you get uh, a decimal. So you can you know go back and forth between those two uh, and see what you can see and that's it.